Welcome to Forge Master Metal Reviews. Hey, we're together now. We have a new little set. Our amps are in the background, so you believe that we're musicians. These could be anyone's amps, honestly. Yeah, there. this is not my amp. Yeah, <laughs> it's, actually it really isn't. That's my wife's amp. That's a bass amp. <laughs> we pulled you guys about maybe doing an FAQ episode. You said you were interested. We got some great questions. I'm excited. Are you excited? For sure. I think there's going to be some really cool stuff to talk about. First question. Brandon Rose. There can only be one Brandon. Brandon Rose asks, what were the first black metal bands that you guys listen to and how do you like your black metal? The first introduction for me for black metal, it was a wee little Brandon, was Cradle of Filth, Cruelty and the Beast, and yes, it is one of my favorite records still, and some mm -hmm. people will say that that's not black metal, go fuck yourself, I don't really care, but in terms of my favorite forms of black metal, I would say it's just anything that's melodic and emotionally aligned. For favorites for black metal lately, got some shout outs here, so check these bands out. Agalock, Alcest, Obsidian Tongue, or Boys in City and Tongue, love those guys. Mm -hmm. Falls Auroros, Nachachwin, amazing band. They got a new album coming out. Enslaved, Winterfelleth, and Uwada, just to name a few. Those are the ones that, what do you got? I put Cradle of Filth as one of the first bands that got me into black metal, so if you're not into it, <laughs> Sorry. For me, it was like Cradle Filth's Midian, Immortal, like the Damned in Black, Heart of Darkness era really got me into that. I was like, holy shit. And Old Man's Child were like my first black metal loves. For right now, I really am eating up the whole post-black metal scene. Altar of Plagues, who is no longer around anymore, but like they have released some of the best black metal I've ever heard. That Catafalque just released Vadak, which is like fucking incredible. Power Carry for the Sky, I love what they're doing. Just kind of anything that's kind of put that sort of post black metal spin on it. Prior to that, it was all like Agaloth, Winterfilleth, Nechachwin, bulky, atmospheric stuff. But right now, it, I'm all about the post black so, stuff. So you're saying that you've moved on to better picks <laughs> than my ones that I haven't graduated I from. <laughs> my taste has gotten more refined. I think he's up when yeah. he's listening to black metal. <laughs> Next one, Matt Davis, our boy, asked who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? Well, Lemmy is gone, so I think God won, to be honest with God you. God won that one. Yeah, so, I mean, you got the stereotypical movie answer, which Lemmy is God, but I mean, Lemmy's dead. Yep. I realize I'm being insensitive, but I feel like it's funnier that way. So. <laughs> also, what is your setup for videos and perhaps even your preferred music gear? What do you play and record with? So we got a question about the rig, so we figured, you know, we'd show we're at least somewhat trying to be legit. I have many guitars. This one is one of my favorites. It's a Les Paul clone Sunburst model. I freaking love this thing. It's actually a pretty cheap guitar. This is the one I use all the time for gigs. I beat the crap out of it. This is my guitar. This is a C1 Diamond. It's a Schecter. This is my oldest guitar. It is my first one. Thank you, Dad, for buying this one for me. It's fantastic. I love it. I haven't done too, too much work on it. I did replace the, the tuning machines here. It it, it's, it sounds great. I love the pickups on here. All original pickups, Seymour Duncan's awesome guitar. This is usually the guitar that I like to record with, play with, etc. for Fate Flower. In terms of pedals, this is probably my favorite thing to talk about. From the top left, we got the organizer. That thing is my pride and joy in terms of the stuff on Marrowfields. Whenever you hear an organ, that's probably what it's coming from. Underneath those are like my time-based effects. So I've got the afterneath on the left. It's basically this cat cavernous, like washy reverb sound. It's, it sounds amazing. The Ghost Echo, very similar, but it's just a reverb. It's kind of like your typical spring reverb. And I got the carbon copy delay. That's just your basic delay. When you stack all those things together, it is the most beautiful, vibrant, gorgeous, cavernous thing you could possibly stack. It just sounds great. I got my noise suppressor, which keeps the amp quiet on stage. And then the boost pedal for pushing leads and making things sound crunchy and things like that. And then obviously a Tuner. My pedal board is pretty simple. I like to go into an Arrows Boost. That kind of gives me that little bit of extra grit there. And then I have this very nice Zoom G3. This gives me all my effects. I don't usually get too, too crazy with effects. So I usually have, you know, something maybe like a reverb on here and then, you know, the other five effects or whatever. I will just kind of bounce between, you know, whether it's a phaser or a chorus or a delay or something like that. It's usually some kind of effect. Ben and I play the same exact amp, 6505. 
fives by PV. This thing is freaking amazing. The clean tone on it is actually surprisingly good. And then I got a Marshall four by 12. This thing has got Celestion V30s in it. Sounds awesome. I use it all the time, lug it to shows. I like to keep things pretty simple. Being a vocalist and a guitarist, I don't want too many points of contact for failure. Thanks so much for asking the question. We actually haven't done anything like this yet. So hope you guys dug it. If you want to see more, let us know. Chip Wild asks, when can we expect the new album from the Fateful Hour and who are your all-time favorite bands, top five to 10 or so? Wow, this is a loaded question, Chip. It is. You got a chip on your shoulder with that <laughs> one. If you're not familiar with the Fateful Hour, this is a band that Brandon and I started as a studio project and we evolved it into a live project. We have two albums. They are Melodic Doom Death, and now this iteration is gonna be a third full length album, but I think we're gonna go like the single route. Yeah, we are single and ready to mingle. That's not what we meant. <laughs> the single route meaning we're probably gonna do like one song every three to four months or something like that. Try to stick to that schedule. Like a lot of other bands, we were hit pretty hard by COVID. We couldn't get together for over a year. Yeah. At the time, the album was pretty much completely tracked. You yeah. were basically done with vocals. You got like one or two songs left. Right. So we're close. We're shooting for basically a music video, hopefully by the end of this year. Favorite of all time, they always change, but you know, my staples that I always seem to return to are Typo Negative, Opeth, King Diamond, Death, Bloodbath, Catatonia, Winterfell with My Dying Bride, Agaloc, and as previously said, Cradle of Filth. I, I, I'm also in the category where they kind of fluctuate. For today, I put Anathema, Evergrey, Catatonia, Alice in Chains, Godspeed You Black Emperor, Rapture, Dismember, Death, Isis, and Agaloc. A little bit of overlap there. That's why we're friends. Yeah. Otherwise, I think I would hate you. Yeah, we probably would hate each other. That's fine. And that would be because of you asking this question, Chip. <laughs> Wheels of Mercury asks, what are your favorite Canadian metal bands? We love Canadian metal. There's some seriously awesome For sure. Canadian metal bands. And I'm just gonna fire off a couple. Tough to pick, honestly, as there are so many good ones. But off the top of my head, I mean, Cryptopsy is just a no-brainer. Yep. Gorgut's another no-brainer. Woods of Ypres, though. Yes one of my absolute favorites. Mm -hmm. Two Mold is so freaking good. I'm a Bloodborne nerd, love the Soulsborne games. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. Archspire, just riff salad stuff, really great. Guitarist of Archspire has actually got a really great channel called Dean Lamb, check that out. Does the four levels of death metal thing with his wife, mm -hmm. awesome stuff. And then Smolder kind of classic traditional heavy metal band. We actually interviewed the vocalist last year. She was super cool. I can't really add much more to that list. Unleash the Archers, I'll pr protest the hero. You know, for me, it's always going to be basically Cryptopsy and Gorguts. And those are the two that I think of. Oh, Into Eternity. How can I forget Into Eternity? I forgot Unleash the Archers and Into Eternity, so <laughs> take my metal card. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> Andy Fox, what's your background in the music industry? We're getting called out. We are. Somebody... Andy, Andy Fox is wondering if we even play music. If we're legit. Which we aren't. I don't know these what aren't, this is. These are actually all cardboard. This is just a, like a, a printed yeah. picture. This is not real. <laughs> No, honestly, though, I've been playing bass, guitar, and doing vocals for, I mean, well over 15 years. Not well the whole time, but, <laughs> you know, I've been doing a lot better with it and a lot more serious about it. I became a metal producer, I don't know, what, three, four years ago now? Really getting into it, yeah. Yeah, I would say that's when I became serious about it. Started recording, mixing, mastering my own music, and as well as music from other bands. I've produced a few local bands, projects that are great. A lot of them are friends of mine, and they've continued to keep going, and a lot of them are still together now. I'll link those in the description if you want to check them out. But to be honest, I just want to make my own music. I like doing that a lot more. It's just my own speed, it's my own stuff. That's not to say that everyone else isn't great. There's obviously some exceptions that I made 
there's some great bands that I do work with. We started this channel though to give back. A lot of the New England metal bands are absolutely fantastic. For sure. And that was the whole point was, you know, shine a light on our metal brethren in New England. We have kind of a, an overlap in terms of our past. Brandon and I were both metal musicians in the New England scene as teenagers. I went to school for audio and video production. I got a bachelor's degree from that. I was in the TV broadcast industry for about 10 years and just recently I kind of shifted gears into the um, computer science industry. I got about, you know, 18 years or so of, of live music experience under my belt, some promotion and booking experience, and some live sound mixing experience. Between the two of us, you know, I think that we've got some really good real life experience and it's been cool to bring it to the channel and to utilize some of the skills that maybe we didn't even realize we had. Yeah, or that we could do at the time and now we can. Right. Start yeah. a channel, you'll, you'll learn a lot about yourself, I'll tell you that. For sure. Thanks Andy, that's a great question. Raven Soul Metal, top five essential 10 out of 10 must own albums. For me, we already did a video on this a while back. The list hasn't really changed, so I'll just fire them off again. Opeth, Blackwater Park, absolutely essential record. It's like the best thing ever. It's like Simon and Garfunkel meets death metal. Cradle of Filth, Cruelty and the Beast. Again, another amazing record. It feels like you're in a Hungarian castle and Elizabeth Bathory is just looking to bathe in your blood. Typo Negative, October Rust. I don't have to say anything else. Just like the biggest influence on me, I think is Peter Steele. Agalock, The Mantle. I, again, another record that is just absolutely pristine. We've probably listened to it at least 8 billion times camping. <laughs> yeah. And then In Flames, Colony, the melodic, just perfection. Guitar playing, everything about that album got me into playing guitar. I picked a few albums based on, kind of went with like a desert island theme. So I wanted a few albums that would allow me to reflect on the human condition. So I chose Alice in Chains and Nirvana's MTV Unplugged, Anathema's Weather Systems, and Into Eternity buried in oblivion. These are all 10 out of 10 albums. And then I put for my for my door kicking music for when I want to smash horseshoe crabs and eat their meat on my desert island. I want Megadeth's Rest in Peace to get me pumped up. Joshua Kerrig, have you ever gotten deep into the lore about a song or album? Yes, I have. King Diamond is one of my favorite bands of all time, and that is one of the best bands to dive into lore. I think my favorite album for lore-wise and story-wise is The Graveyard. It's basically like a revenge story where King's character is falsely accused after witnessing in the story the mayor's daughter basically abusing his daughter. He ends up getting locked away in a sanitarium and the guy is just maniacal and insane and there's this twist and turn story and I love the fact that the album does a great job of describing exactly where he is and how it smells, what he sees, what people are feeling. It's a very, very well-written album. It's just so theatrical in the way it's performed. Plus, Andy LaRock on guitar is just not even fair. No. What about you? I can't really say I've particularly gotten into like uh, a particular album. I can't say that I've gotten into a particular album's lore. I've always been interested on songs that are based on like true events and maybe how the musicians kind of their perspective of the event. I don't think I've gotten into anything as much as like really understanding the stories ins and outs but it interests me what a song's themes are what's the message behind the, th the song what's the context behind the song I think that's about as deep as I am curious to go everybody to varying degrees is interested in stuff like that you know like you love the nerdiness behind who are the members what bands are they in mm -hmm. I like hate that stuff <laughs> just funny to see how far you want to be nerdy with your metal what are your favorite lore based albums though drop that in the comments. Thanks so much for tuning into the first FAQ episode. If you haven't yet, hit that like button. It really helps us out to spread this video to new fans. And if you're new, hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Take care. Be well. Go with the gods, Forge Masters.